Hi everyone, welcome to my channel. I wanted to take some time today just to tell you pretty much all about my fitness journey and what led me to be so passionate about body positivity and self-love and fitness and basically just everything that has happened to my body and my mind um, throughout the few years that led me to where I am now. I started gaining weight out of control um, towards the end of high school beginning of college, you know, like they talk about the freshman 15, so I know like I didn't have the best like food choices at school, although I did try to make good choices with what was available. So that was kind of hard for me. I never, like I never was super slim in high school, but I was pretty small. Um, I'm only 5'2", so... I was pretty petite. I would say I was at an average weight, although there were a lot of times for me throughout high school, and I think this probably happens to, well, I know it happens to a lot of high school girls, body image issues. So that definitely happened to me. I wasn't um, happy with my weight a lot of times, and it's like when I look back, I'm like, wow, I was so tiny during some of those times and feeling like, I don't know, like I was overweight and I needed to lose weight. So I guess my issues kind of started back then. So like I said, I was in college eating food that was making me gain weight, the whole freshman 15 thing. And if I want to backtrack and go back to like the like middle of high school, like maybe sophomore year or junior year, I started off and on feeling really exhausted. I did have times where I would gain a lot of weight and then I would lose a lot of weight and it, like I really wasn't changing like how active I was. I wasn't changing my diet. So it was like just really like crazy like how much I was getting losing weight and in short periods of time. Like I remember one month I gained 10 pounds and like the next month I like started doing Zumba and I lost 10 pounds. 10 pounds. So it just was really odd and then along with the like being really exhausted um, and my like cravings for food, like one week I'd be really hungry and then I was like, would it be hungry? Yeah, I just had a lot of issues like that and I would go to the doctor, they would do a bunch of blood tests and it would come back like negative for everything. So it was just kind of frustrating and I just thought, well like maybe I'm making this up in my head, like maybe there's you know, nothing wrong with me and I just need to figure it out whatever so I just kind of let it go you know I'll go back to the doctor when I wasn't feeling good again you know same thing run tests nothing you know can't find anything you know get over it whatever so then in high school or I mean in college I started gaining weight so at one point at some point then in college I decided that I need to do something about this. Like the freshman 15, like quickly turned into the freshman 20 and so on. So I was like, I need to take control of this. Like I need to eat better or whatever. So I joined a Zumba class with my friends and that was like super fun. We had a blast doing that. I still, you know, love Zumba today. Like I haven't even, I haven't done Zumba in a really long time but I really enjoyed it in college. So that was great, but then I also started trying to change my diet, which was really hard to do with the options that I had at school. So I like really cut back my calories. So basically like my whole diet was just like terrible. Um, honestly, I think that at one point I probably like wasn't even getting to a thousand calories a day, which like if you don't know anything about calories, macros, whatever, like a thousand calories, even for somebody who's 5'2", is not enough. Even if you're not active at all, like that's not enough food. It's terrible. So I really wasn't treating my body well and my relationship with food wasn't good. And I wasn't, like I just wasn't happy with any of that. Like I wasn't happy, you know, I was doing Zumba and that was great, but I wasn't happy with my nutrition. I wasn't happy with like the outlook I had on my body. Everything was really just negative. I'm still at this point like, occasionally going to the doctor with these weight issues because what happened is when I lowered my calories and started exercising, nothing changed. 
So I actually was still continuing to gain weight, which makes sense because sometimes when you like put your calories that low, it can actually like your body just starts holding on to everything. And so it has the opposite effect and you gain weight, but at the same time, like I was already gaining weight. So basically nothing was changing. I was, you know, lowering my calories, working out. And so I realized like I really needed to find peace with what my body was and I had to accept that, you know, I'm working out, I need to I need to eat more and I need to find a way to be healthy and whatever my body looks like after that, like that's what I have to accept. Like I have to love myself exactly how I am. And that was a really hard reality for me to accept because you know, like like I said before, like all throughout high school even, you know, I always wanted to be slimmer. I would like tear out magazines of like little tiny girls with these like really cute bikinis on and I would tape them to my wall and I would look at them and I would even do like crunches and look at them. It was like just really not a good place to be in. So I wanted to find a way to accept myself how I was. So after I went through that whole journey of accepting my body how it was, I continued to gain weight, a lot of weight, and I actually did get to a place where I was okay with that. I knew there was something wrong because I was still going through those periods of being exhausted and the, like, the food cravings were crazy. So I still knew there was something wrong and that was I still wanted to resolve that, but as far as what my body looked like, I accepted that. So. Anyway, at this point, it was after my freshman year of college, the symptoms that I had experienced off and on for the past probably almost five years, they all got like significantly worse. I was continuing to gain weight and the exhaustion that I was experiencing was so amplified. Like I felt like a zombie. Because of that, I had like memory loss. I was working in an office. And I, my memory capacity was so bad that I felt like I could even do my job. Um, so I actually like started having to leave work early a lot because I felt like my brain was so clouded. I felt like I was in a fugue state. I felt so foggy. And it was summertime and like I was so cold all the time. Like it was the craziest thing. Like I would be outside in like 86 degree weather and I would go inside and get a blanket and bring it outside and wrap myself in it outside in 86 degree weather. Like it was crazy. So yeah, it was like terrible and I like am so fortunate because the people I worked with were, showed me a lot of grace and understood and were there for every part of what I was dealing with, like I had a lot of doctor's visits and I had to go for blood tests to try to figure out what was going on. And so finally I go to the doctor, I get all the blood tests I did before, um, which each year for these like five years, when I'd have these symptoms and I would go, the blood tests that they would usually do were to test for anemia, which is an iron deficiency, they would test um, for vitamin D deficiency, they would also usually test for hypothyroidism, which, um, if you have seen any of my posts on Instagram, you know that is what I ended up being diagnosed with that summer. When I got diagnosed, it was like crazy enough. Like as long as 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 much as I didn't want to be diagnosed with like a lifelong disorder. Like, it was almost like a sense of relief to finally figure out what was going on, and I knew that I could start treatment for it. And so I started treatment. It takes, like, usually a few months to start feeling better. So the rest of that summer was still really hard for me to get through, but I pushed through it. I started feeling better with the meds eventually. And it was just really awesome because before I began treatment, it just affected every aspect of my life. Like, it affected my body image so, so much um, because of the weight gain, which in the end I actually kind of feel like that was positive because it really made me accept myself like exactly where I was at at that point in time. But then it was also affecting my job, it was affecting my relationships because I was so tired that like I 
like my personality kind of changed. Like I just wasn't as energetic. I didn't really want to have conversations with people because I really didn't have the energy to do it. So I'm just really thankful that that all got sorted out and I am where I am. I still struggle with hypothyroidism and there are times where my levels are off and then I start to feel those symptoms again and my gain some weight, whatever. But like there, it's never quite as bad as like that first time. And like I said, like now that I like have accepted my body where it's at, if I gain a few pounds, like that's okay. Like, and I go to the doctor and I get it sorted out. So then um, after being diagnosed, I started doing some cardio and light weights because I was excited to finally be back in control of my body because I felt totally out of control for the few years prior to that. I was excited for that, so I got back into the gym. I joined Planet Fitness. I think it was that summer or the next summer. I don't remember, um, but I got back into the gym, was doing a lot of cardio and light weights. I did lose some weight. Um, which was just encouraging to know that like I was back in control and could see the results of my fitness again. So that was encouraging. I was like off and on at the gym. I was off and on going to the gym basically until I finished college because I was working like four different jobs and I try I condensed everything so I could graduate in three and a half years. And so that was crazy, and it was worth it. It was crazy. I'll just leave it at that. I got married then in the summer of 2016. And so I was still going to the gym, and I wasn't really, I didn't really try to lose weight for my wedding. I just wanted to be fit and fit my wedding dress and not gain any weight. So, you know, I worked out before that. It wasn't ever like really that serious up to that point, like more just for my health. I also like really took nutrition seriously again and tried not to under eat, which was kind of hard to do because I was so used to under eating. So that was kind of difficult. And then after my wedding, I actually ended up gaining a little more weight, which I really didn't notice, like it was fine. And they say like, after you get married, like you gain weight because you get comfortable and like, I don't know, it's a whole thing, it's a whole, I don't know how many people do, but it's all good. But then I really wanted to get back into the gym because I liked the way that it made me feel. Back, all the way back in middle school, I actually started weightlifting after school a few days a week with some friends and I really enjoyed that. So I kind of felt like I wanted to get back into that and that was a year ago. So I wanted to weightlift them this time rather than doing cardio and like weights, um, which some people love and that's awesome, but like I just am not a cardio person. Like I admire people who can just like get out there and run like five miles. Like it honestly like blows my mind. And if you're a runner, like you're awesome. So I wanted to get back into weightlifting. So I did, and I loved it. I really started to take nutrition and fitness really seriously. And I realized that how much like body positivity and fitness really can work together. A lot of the people on Instagram right now, the influencers, you don't see a lot of like fitness and body positivity, not that they're like mutually exclusive, but it's not something you see a lot of or focusing wholeheartedly on both, which is what I'm kind of trying to do. Um, so when I got back into the gym, it really wasn't to change my body. Like I gained weight after my wedding and I knew that and it was fine. Like I, I had accepted my body, you know, previously and I knew, you know, I wanted to get back into fitness, but like changing my body wasn't a really big deal to me because I love myself like how I was. So I actually went to the doctor I don't know, for a checkup, and he told me, you know, you have gained some weight since your last visit. You're overweight and you're actually getting close to, your BMI is getting close to the obesity range. And I was like, all right, I do want to get back into, this is what I told him, I do want to get back into nutrition and fitness. So that's something that's important to me. And he actually, I'm going to read it to you. I have it here. 
he gave me this printout and he said, I actually created this document and I give it to all my patients who are either at risk of obesity or currently obese. So I'm not gonna read the whole thing to you, but I'm gonna read what I think are really disturbing parts of this document. When we talk about losing weight, it's common to hear people say, yes, I need to exercise more, which is good to hear, but the real solution relies mainly on eating less and the push and to push hunger between meals. Physical activity is helpful, but it's not the main solution. My recipe for weight loss, hunger is good, pleasant, and enjoyable feeling. I just want to stop there and say, and this is women and men, but I'm talking to my ladies. Have you ever been hangry? Because I have. And pretty much if I don't eat when I'm hungry, like, I get hangry and I need a healthy snack in between meals because like, I just am not happy when I'm hungry and ain't nothing gonna change that. So I'm gonna keep going. We learn to condition ourselves to hate and not accept hunger. We condition ourselves to obtain pleasure from eating. The thought process has, has to change. Think about how you can put up with being cold better by thinking how nice and fresh the cold winter, air, winter feels in comparison with being in humid scorching 90 degree weather. Like this comparison blows my mind. Like this, I just was like appalled when he handed this to me because like I'm thankful that I went through my journey with body positivity and was okay with myself because honestly at that point I think I was 20, 21 and I look at that and it's like a girl in her late teens, early 20s, I don't care, any woman reading that, like that you need to change the way you think about hunger and love hunger, that screams recipe for eating disorder to me. And like, I just was really upset that he was handing this out to people. So I'm gonna read just a few more things from this document. Here we go. You can later pay attention to the quality of food that you eat, but that's not the main problem. Okay. The main culprit is the total amount of food consumed. Everything counts except for water. Don't lie to yourself or your stomach by throwing water, low calorie snacks, or anything you can just to deceive hunger. Better than that is to learn to embrace hunger as a great friend. And here is the last paragraph. Studies in animals such as rats have confirmed that very well-fed rat, rats that are obese live worse and die much sooner than rats that are fed just enough to survive. That, that sounds like torture to me. I'm just saying, I'm pretty sure that is not humane to animals, but okay. It is contradictory to our normal thought we would think that we would do better with more nutrients, but we really don't. We do better without any extra cargo in our bodies. So this letter, yeah, it really shocked me that this doctor was giving this out to people because everything, I kind of disagree with a lot of what he said, and I actually was needing enough prior to my fitness journey and when I um, when I started my recent fit fitness journey back in the winter, I actually started eating more and in that I actually like lost 20 pounds in the first few months. So I was eating more, didn't follow his advice, started eating more because my body needed the nutrients um, and if you're going to build muscle, you need food because you can't gain muscle mass without eating more and that was my goal so then I started really getting into clean eating and weightlifting my I didn't really have like a specific weight loss goal you know I was thinking I probably would lose weight because I had gained some weight like specifically from not eating well and not exercising 
But my goal just was to feel good and to really treat my body well. For me, um, lots of people define body positivity in different ways and that's totally fine. Like, I love that. Like, I love that everybody has different interpretations. But my personal, personally the way I define body positivity is taking care of your body and loving yourself. And that is something that I do both mentally and physically. So I'm treating my body positively by putting good things in it and exercising in the way that I enjoy. I really think that you really have to find something fitness-wise that you enjoy. Um, so then it doesn't feel like a punishment because I don't really feel like that's being kind to yourself. And then also mentally, like accepting your body at whatever point it is. And even if you aren't able to go to the gym for whatever reason or get into fitness for whatever reason, or you, like me, have something going on with your body where it's not working properly and that's causing you to gain weight. Like self-love and loving yourself through all those different points, that's what body positivity is to me. So ever since then, I've really fallen in love with lifting and challenging myself. And I posted my first post on body positivity on Instagram and I got a lot of positive responses from that and a lot of people messaging me and commenting and saying, you know, thank you so much for this. Like I've been there, like I've struggled to love myself, I've struggled to love my body or I'm struggling to find something within fitness that I enjoy, but you've inspired me to start lifting or start doing whatever. And that like just really hit me and I realized like how many people I could impact by posting I'm just about my journey on it and I, you know, I am not perfect and I try to be transparent about that. That's why I want this whole channel on YouTube to be about body positivity and fitness. Um, I want to be able to expand more on topics that I've touched on about body positivity on my Instagram and I really want to share more detailed workouts with you guys, give you nutrition tips all of that stuff I want to be able to expand on. So this YouTube channel really isn't for me. It's for you, it's for anyone who needs to hear the message about self-love, body positivity, who wants tips on fitness and nutrition, and honestly anything else. Like I just want to be real with you guys and to hopefully be able to be with you in whatever journey and whatever you're going through. So for this to work out and for me to have more stuff to post on here. I really, 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 really want to hear your thoughts. Um, I want to know what you want to hear about. Like, I am more than happy to talk about anything and to be totally transparent with you guys. Um, that's kind of the whole point of my mission. So with that said, please like this video if you liked it. If not, then you know, bye. And please subscribe to my channel if you want to hear more. And also please comment down below and tell me what you want to hear about. Like, what do you want to see in my videos? What would inspire you? Comment below and hopefully I will look forward to making more videos and sharing more with you guys.